Uh, you guys had to make a roster move to bring uh, Culver back. We will, yes. They have to do it today, though. Uh, it, that'll be tomorrow. Was it Amerson? Uh, we, yeah, we did Amerson, yes. Um, can you, I guess, just talk about the reasoning behind that? Um, well, we had to get a roster spot, not only for, you know, we had Kierce uh, also, so we had some roster spots we have to take care of. And, um, you know, with the guys that we brought in with uh, D Hall playing well and obviously Culver and uh, Amerson was just the odd man out, unfortunately. You know, he had some good moments here as a Washington Redskin, but uh, we thought it was time to uh, make a move and part ways. What was it with his game that just didn't quite start clicking, or what were you hoping to see from him that you didn't quite get from him? Um, you know, I don't know. I think it's more about the other guys that are here um, doing well. Uh, we like what Chris Culver brings to the table. Like I said, we feel like D. Hall is going to uh, continue to get better and better. Um, you know, with his coming back off his injury, I think he's going to get stronger and stronger. And um, It's not so much what he didn't do. It's just the other guys are playing better, to be honest with you. When, when you have, I mean, he, was, he wasn't your second round pick, but he was a second round pick. When you have high picks that don't pay off like that, how much does that hurt um, just for the building and developmental process of your team? That hurts. You want all your draft picks, obviously. You want to build your team with, within the draft, obviously. And uh, unfortunately, not all of them are going to hit. Um, and, and who's to say that he won't? He might be a great player somewhere else in the next year or so. So uh, his career's not over by a long shot. You know, he's going to go somewhere else and play and probably play well. It's just uh, we felt like it was time to move on from him. Uh, but we do want to develop our draft picks, obviously, and, and uh, that's the goal and the intent. I think we have uh, five for my first year and uh, I think seven right now from uh, this past year. So uh, we are doing that right now. I hate to keep harping on this, but it's kind of a bigger deal. But with David, you, you, the inconsistency, inconsistencies in the past seem to have bothered him. He has the ideal size and all that that you want in a corner. So what, what kind of things do you feel like he would have to – to get better at, to, to become the kind of corner that people thought maybe he could. I just think done. he just needs to work on his consistency because, you know, he does show flashes of being an excellent corner. He's got the size. He's got all the measurables that you want as a, as a good cornerback. It's just for whatever reason, uh, they don't always uh, show consist on a consistent basis when he's out there. So, um, But like I said before, we feel really good about the corner spot, the depth that we have, um, and we had to use that roster spot. I would love to keep him, but uh, we just – had to do what we had to do with the injuries and spate and now Perry Riley and obviously Deshaun Jackson. We have some guys on our 53-man roster that aren't helping us, so we had to, you know, unfortunately make a move. What's Perry's status? Uh, you know, he didn't go today. He's got a calf injury and obviously it was a walkthrough today, did not participate today, and it's, uh, you know, he's, he's up in the air. Deshaun obviously is also, uh, he did not pr practice. Justin Rogers, spate. Uh, Baker was not here today on a non-football uh, related uh, deal um, limited was uh, Tom Compton and Morgan Moses with his knee, and then full were Terrence Knighton, D. Hall, Corey Lichtensteiger, and Sean Laval with his calf. So you all keep Plummer up for a little while longer until you know about Perry. Oh yeah, yeah, no question. What did you think about how he did special teams wise? Thought he did good. You know, it's first action. Um, I think he did a good job. And, and right now, you know, if Perry can't go Thursday night, we'll only have three inside backers up. So he's going to be a major part in. Uh, you know, the depth, obviously, and special teams. Quickly on Moses, would, he came back into the game. Is there a lingering concern there at all? No, he came back in the game, and, and, and uh, he looked okay today. It was just a walkthrough, but he's a little sore, but I think he'll be okay. Wanted to ask you about third downs, and Kirk in particular, um, third and five or less, he's, I, I think, hasn't missed a pass yet on third down. What's gone into that evolution? I know that's something you guys stressed in the offseason. Yes, that's something we definitely stressed, and Kirk does an excellent job of getting the ball out and on time. You know, those are tightly contested plays, uh, tight windows. Some of them are tight man-to-man -man coverages. Some of them are in tight holes and zones, and, and there's usually somebody uh, creating some kind of pressure. So uh, he does a great job with his feet getting the ball out of his hands and, and reading the coverage and making accurate throws. And, uh, you know, those are huge plays for us. You know, like I said, after the game, the third and eight to Chris Thompson on the check down, and then the next third and five, the option route to Jordan Reed uh, enabled us to keep that drive alive and put some more plays on them and wear the defense down. So, you know, if you're going to be a running team, like I said, like our intent is, we're going to have a lot of these third down and fives, and it's going to be huge for us to convert on those. And we are right now at a good rate. That's why we're having success, or we had success yesterday. Jay, sticking with the third down theme on that final drive uh, when Matt ran for, I think, nine on third and eight. Normally in that situation, even up 17-10, it's a passing down. Did Kirk check out of something? Did, did, did you guys just say, you know what, this kid can't be stopped today? Like, kind of take me through that. Well, there's a couple things there. Was, uh, 
we're working the clock also. We're playing the clock, and a field goal there would have given us a 10-point lead, two-possession game. Um, so I think it was uh, – and we're having success running the ball. So we don't want to risk putting the ball up in the air. Um, interception, tip ball, sack fumble, something like that. We want to run the ball, keep them in bounds, and, and eat another 45 seconds off the clock. Worst-case scenario, we kick a field goal, go up 10, and that's two possessions, and that's tough to overcome with four – three or four minutes to go uh, in a couple timeouts. So that was our thinking there, and, and, and we had some runs that we liked, and, and Matt Jones got a big first down on it. Um, Jay, sticking with that same drive, could you just speak generally to the, I guess, the, the significance, the importance of, of getting points out of that drive at that stage in the game to, to have a healthy separation, and, and did the fact that you guys could do so, chewing up so much of the clock, tell you anything about this team uh, that, that gives you encouragement compared to last season when there were some fourth quarters that didn't go well? Yeah, no, it was, it was a big drive because they, they had some momentum. You know, they cut it to 17 to 10, and uh, the game was still very much up in the air. And like I said, the uh, you know first we had third down at 13, and the false start, we used a snap count. Uh, Kurt did a great job using a snap count, and that goes unnoticed. But go from third and 13 to third and eight was huge. And then we got the first down on a check down, and we were able to run a lot of clock. And, and the offense aligned and playing with a lot of confidence. The tight ends, Jordan Reed, uh, Derek, they did, they did an excellent job in the running game also. So uh, very impressive all the way around with the offensive line, tight ends, backs, um, able to eat some clock, wear a defense down like that, control the clock. Uh, but it's only made possible if you convert those third downs, and those were huge. And it was a huge confidence builder for our team, and a huge uh, momentum swing. It took whatever momentum they had out because we kept their offense on the sideline, kept our defense fresh, and obviously got a two-score lead, which uh, put the game away. Jay, you guys had to use Kaishan Jarrett, obviously out of necessity, but what was it about, looking back at the film, what was it about uh, his play that stood out to you? Who's that? Jarrett. Kaishan. Jarrett. Oh, uh, you know, he, he played uh, nickel. He did a good job. You know, he's a tough kid. You know, he's uh, in a training camp. He's playing free safety. He's playing a little strong safety. And then we have, he asked to play some nickel uh, when we had some injuries to our secondary. And he did a good job in there and uh, obviously uh, was asked to do so in the game yesterday. And he did some good things, man. Jer he, he's a tough kid. He flies around, good sound tackler, uh, knows the position. And uh, he's a guy that's going to really develop into a solid defensive back. And I say defensive back because he's versatile. He can play in the box, he can play free safety, and he can play nickel. So those guys are invaluable to have on your football team, not to mention he's good on special teams. So that was a great pickup for us, and he's going to be a guy that's going to be here for a long time. I mean, so much was made about the way the front seven played yesterday. How would you assess the defensive backfield in general, how well those guys covered? I thought they did great. You know, they were sound in what they did. You know, we gave up the one big play over the top to, to Britt. But overall, you know, we kept things uh, uh, underneath this. I mean, I think he had only 150 yards passing. You know, we're breaking on the ball. And when they did throw completion short, we had everybody rallying to the ball, making good sound tackles. And uh, that's what our defense is all about. You know, it was very sound defensive game plan. And uh, those guys executed it very well. So very happy so far with our defense. I think we're first in the league. And, you know, if you're a stat guy, I think we're number one in yards allowed. So uh, yards per rush is, is excellent. Third down conversions are excellent. So we're obviously on the right track. We're going to have a different challenge every week. This week we have Eli Manning and, uh, you know, Odell Beckham. And, and uh, so it'll be a great challenge for us. But uh, we, we are on the right track. Um, for you guys seem to be, obviously, we've talked about the commitment to the run game for a long time now. But second and longs, third and longs even, third, you, know, you guys are still running the ball. How hard is it to stay committed to the run in those situations? And when you are, how much does it open up? What other things you can do and maybe keep a defense off balance? I think uh, you're right. It does open up a lot of things for us. You know, and I think it will continue to open up things uh, in the future if we can continue to stick to it. Um, every defense will give us different problems. You know, New York Giants are a good, sound defensive front led by Colin Jenkins. And, um, you know, it's never going to be easy. Um, uh, but uh, we have to stick to it, and uh, it does a couple things. Obviously, it runs clock. Um, our linemen love it, and, and uh, it takes a little bit of pressure off the quarterback, which is very, very important. So, um, you know, it's, it's been good for us. It's been a good recipe for us so far. As, as a play caller, though, is it hard to stay that yeah, sometimes committed? Sometimes. We have a lot of good pass concepts that you like as a coordinator. You draw them up on a chalkboard, and uh, you like to try to tax certain coverages with the skilled guys that we have. Uh, so sometimes it is hard. Uh, to call another run play when you got Pierre and Ryan Grant and Jordan Reed and all that stuff. But uh, I think the guys are uh, welcoming the fact that we are uh, sticking to the running game. Uh, you saw Jordan Reed, I think, he had his best game as a tight end, as a blocker by far, that I've been been with him. 
Um, and he's starting to buy in, obviously, which is a huge. And they understand that it's going to open up everything else down the road for us. So, uh, so far, everything's been positive. Jay, uh, obviously, Matt Jones had a great game. A uh, little bit of a struggle on special teams, though, I guess. A couple missed blocks. Yeah, a couple foo bars on special teams. Yeah, nobody, <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Uh, we'll get them coached up, though. You know, that's just uh, the way it is. You know, we got to congratulate him on his tough running style. You know, we got to coach him up on the fumble, obviously, and some of his uh, pump protection issues that were uh, well seen by everybody. Was, was he supposed to be in on that when you had to call timeout? You only had 10 players. That was his. Yeah, he's supposed to be in there. Yeah, he okay. forgot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then he, he let a guy go inside of him, almost got a pump block, too. So we, we got to coach him up on special teams. And, you know, the, understanding the importance of that role, uh, I think, is something that he just has to buy into. I don't think he uh, necessarily is complaining about being He just got to get reps at it. You know, it's new to him. Um, short week. Um, were you a, did you start doing some game planning, like, back before the season started, or did you just – you know, since you knew this was coming, it was early, or did you yeah, just well, get going? Yeah, well, the defense did because, you know, the same offensive coordinator is there. But as an offense, we couldn't do it because they have a new defensive coordinator. So we had to wait, and we got a couple games on them now. So it's kind of a, you know, we're, we're pushing it through uh, right now as an offensive staff. But defensively, they did a lot of it uh, in the offseason. Uh, D'Angelo was just telling us in the locker room that Perry Fuel has been talking to him, you know, just not a whole lot about, about what to expect from some of the players. Having an ex-coordinator like that, obviously does you no good as far as scheme goes since they've changed it, but just as far as player tendencies and, you know, what, what they don't, don't like to do and do, do and don't, does it help yeah. you along those lines? Oh, no question. We're going to be picking Perry Fuel's brain quite a bit uh, this week, and he knows his players very well, and uh, I know he's a well-respected guy over there. And, any information that he can give us will help. Uh, but obviously, they do have a different scheme. Um, so uh, we'll take it for a grain of salt. But uh, we will definitely use Perry's input. Jay, in other leagues like the NBA that has games, multiple games per week, there's advanced scouts that kind of look ahead. Is there anything like that on your staff? Obviously, you and the coordinators and such are looking one opponent at a time. But do you have people on your staff that are looking a week ahead, especially in a week like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have advanced scouts that went to the game last week and give us a full report on what they see at the game. and. Uh, good information. Is there a difference in how you use that information on that sh on the shorter week in terms of when you digest it or anything like that? No, no. Same, same stuff. Same information. You know, basically uh, how much no huddle they're doing. All the stuff that advanced scouts give you, personnel-wise, injury reports. Um, you know, all that is very beneficial to us. And then completely unrelated, uh, anything that you guys did with Tavon Austin, or at least the success confidence-wise that you have, does that help looking forward to a guy like Odell Beckham this week? Yeah. Well, Odell Beckham. Yeah. Um, He's a heck of a player, obviously. He hurt us really bad the second time we played him. You know, the first time it was a tight end that got us, and then the second time we put so much, uh, you know, we had so much awareness on a tight end, Odell, Odell Belkin killed us. So they have, a, you know, a couple guys that are really, really good. Obviously, Odell's in a, in a class by himself, dang near in our division. You know, he had such a great year. Um, so, uh, but, but handling Tavon is, is, was, was a good start for us, but the challenge week in and week out, there's going to be somebody on the other team that's going to change your approach. You know, this week, obviously, it's Odell and uh, Eli, so uh, we'll have a plan, obviously. You went up to the line, no huddle on some third down situations. Is that just something, you know, a matter of trusting Kirk? Do you call two plays in the huddle, or does he just call something at the line? Yeah, we have uh, some no huddle packages that we can get to, um, and Kirk's very comfortable doing that. You know, all three of our quarterbacks are, obviously, so uh, it's something to try to pick up the tempo a little bit, maybe, uh, you know, limit a defensive coordinator's ability to get to some of his uh, fastballs, you know, huddle call fastballs, but, you know, it didn't really hurt. Uh, Coach Williams, he still had some of his blitzes dialed up. But uh, I think it's just a good way to keep the tempo up. And, and uh, Kirk feels very comfortable doing that. He can get to the plate at the line of scrimmage. It gives him a lot of time. You know, you, you get to the line of scrimmage, and it leaves you 25, 30 seconds to diagnose what the coverage is or what the blitz might be, how to send your protection. And, and Kirk does a good job with it. Jay, I'm not sure if you mentioned him earlier, but Loval seems like a almost a completely different player, say, from the first half of last year to what we've seen, I guess, kind of the first two weeks, the pancake block on the Matt Jones touchdown and just pulling all over the place and knocking guys out. Is he dramatically different, or is it just a slight different, better scheme, what? Sean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's doing good. You know, um, um, we're doing some different type of runs with him pulling a little bit more, and uh, he's showing his athleticism. You know, that's 
probably one of the knocks on him was his athleticism. He's more of a, you know, coming in here, he's more of a power type, phone booth type offensive guard, but he's showing his versatility this year, pulling and, and doing a great job. So uh, protection has been excellent. Uh, he and Trent on the same side are two big, powerful men. And then you go on the right side with Morgan and Brandon, and they're powerful in their own right. So, uh, but, you know, I think overall, I think Sean's doing an excellent job. But, you know, that offensive line's anchored. Corey Lichtensteiger had an outstanding game. He's getting to the second level effortlessly and uh, did some great things in the running game. So, overall, that, that offensive group is doing an excellent job. And, you know, to maintain what we're trying to do, it's going to be a great challenge for them uh, week in and week out to keep it up. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.